like we can just get started and do a trial here. Dainita, okay. tell us about your new book. Oh, it's very exciting. It's a photo novel. It's not just a book of photos. And it's a what? Photo novel. Photo novel. So I'm experimenting. Let's see if it works. We've designed it to look just like a photo novel. We've used the same paper. And... What paper? The paper that literary books are printed on. Literary? Yeah. Because my publisher prints all of Gunter Grass's books. So the same paper. That was... That was came quite suddenly. Yeah. But uh, it's like buff, some kind of buff paper. Or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Uh, what is it called? Bina, what's paper called that has no volume? High bulb, high yes, bulb. High bulb, high bulb. High bulb, high bulb, high bulb paper. Hey, Mr. Raude. Silence. So it's it's out or it's coming? I mean, excuse it's me. It's opening tomorrow. Oh, yes. Okay, that's the one. That's the one. What number of your book? How many books so far? This is maybe the 14. Wow. So you have so many children, you lost track of them. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. most the earlier ones were all photo documentary, would that be right? No? Yeah, like a photo biography you could oh. say. Of Zakir and Mona was photo biography. Privacy was another kind of biography. And I tried something called photo fiction with House of Love. But now of course I'm very excited about the photo novel. Let's I see. see. So let's see how people respond. And the publisher is in, is in Steidl, Germany. 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 Very so he specially sent these by U UPS wow. because I told him I want to release it in Saligam. I see. At the institute. Like 22 years ago, you remember yeah. my exhibition here. So it's yeah. a very important occasion. So Dimel Vado was also photo kind of uh, documentary? Yeah. Yeah, it was photographs of people of the village. But there the great thing was it immediately connected photography and dissemination. And I would say to photographers that making photos is just one part. But dissemination is really the great thing that photography does more than any other medium. The people you are working with should also be part of the creation process. You are that creating. also, of course, of course. The collaboration is very important. But dissemination, how do you put your work out? What are the forms you find? So this was disseminated directly in the backyard of where it was shot, no? Yeah, exactly. So people just peel the pictures off the wall and part of the wall with it as well and took them home in this place yeah exactly in the same place yeah how and would how would you like to be remembered for your work in what makes you different from so many others because i <clears throat> i'm constantly challenging myself i want to do something else there's always more to do i never feel like oh this is great i've done it never never your entry into photography was very planned or was it a series no, it of chances no it was a complete accident I because i was over photographed as a child i see and so that was not the last thing i wanted to be was a photographer and then an organizer pushed me at a concert and i had to s you know the two men who came today were the yeah. ones with whom i sat all night trying to decide whether I want to be a photographer or in not. In that photo when you were that age? The no, photo, no. Just now two people had come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but no, I mean I've seen the two men, but I'm saying when you were the age of that photo. Exactly. Just a little younger than that. Teens? Eighteen. Eighteen. And then I decided with them I'm gonna be a photographer because then that way I didn't have to follow any of the social obligations. It was tough for a woman in those years, no? We're there talking were no about women early eighties. Early eighties. There were no women in mm. photography, so it was easy. It was I easy. made my own rules. And the boys never took me seriously. And good for that, because see where I am now. <laughs> so what camera did your parents use to over-photograph you? My mother used to use a Zeiss icon, wow. which had yeah. manual yeah. focus. So she used to take these little the, steps. The, the big format? No, this kind. Yeah, which you held on your chest? Yeah, you could hold it on your chest okay. or at your eye level. Zeiss had very good lenses, no? Yeah, yeah. And they used what film in those days? Film was hard to come by. I don't know. Or I think it was some Kodak Ilver? film. Kodak. Yeah. Black and white. Mm. Okay. And what were your favorite cameras? Hasselblad, 80mm lens. I've just used my whole life one camera, one lens, really? one film. Yeah. Really? So that's why I don't understand this gear thing. That's the first thing to stop in photography is this obsession with gear. Get one camera, one lens, master it. Forget about it. And your transition to digital happened when? About five, six years ago, because processing was no longer as good. Printing became very bad. So first I started to make digital prints, 
and printing became bad because the paper was no longer available. Then once I started to make digital prints, I started to shoot digitally. And then I realized, actually, if I want, I can make an exhibition of a thousand photographs because it's digital. So it has its advantages also. Cool. All the best. Thank you so much. All Thank the best you. for tomorrow.